he is member of parliament for North Tong. He has been vociferous in talk about the president's travels initially, then the National Cathedral, and he is also a stalwart of the National Democratic uh, Congress. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the member of parliament for North Tong, Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa. He joins me in the studio. Good morning, Hi. sir. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm okay. Thanks for joining the conversation. So since we started off from that angle already, let, let's just clear that hurdle before we get into Mepe and everything in between. Um, what do you make of it? You've, you've heard all the discussions. You've seen the Daily Guide's um, you know, story. What do you make of it? I mean, honestly, it's a little too late. Uh, many Ghanaians uh, had expected that this non-performing team which has delivered the worst economic crisis in living memory. I don't recall any time in our history that we've had to go through financial haircuts, a domestic debt exchange program, that we have been declared bankrupt, that all the rating agencies from Moody's to Fitch to Standard & Poor's have all downgraded us, giving us junk status. We, we, we've, we've, we, we've defaulted. But, 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 uh, on, but in on, terms on, of downgrades, we've had, we've had downgrades before. Yeah, but, but not to this, mm. you know, to, not this, to this level, to this extent, you know. So you look at every sector. I mean, you take the health ministry, for example. I mean, uh, Kwekwe Jimamenu has been indicted by parliament, a bipartisan committee, you know, declared him, you know, uh, guilty uh, with the Sputnik V uh, scandal. You have members of parliament in an unprecedented move on the ruling party side all coming together and at a point you heard the majority leader say that now all of them are at them that the finance minister should go mm. you have a situation where but, but, but now minister, but now he's the, going the, 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 uh, per, per what we're gathering he will go but, but you see when the rot is so deep the uh, destruction, the devastation, the catastrophe is now so, you know, um, emphatic, to put it mildly. What really do you expect in this, you know, dying hours uh, under a lame duck president? So, really. Uh, You're referring to the, the president as a lame duck yes, president. I, mean, I, I don't yeah. think he appreciates yeah, what I mean, you're calling but, him. But, you know, I agree. I, agree. I, I think I, you, could be, you could be more friendly. I, with, I, I, with I agree president. with Why would you call him no, a lame no, duck? I agree with Speaker Bagbin. As a student of political science, you know, when you are in your, you know, your, your, your dying moments and you have elected a flag bearer, mm. uh, the power interests, the power dynamics, and loyalties shift. Uh, and, 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 I and, and, it doesn't and, make him a lame duck. No, Can't no, you no. find a different no, no, alternative? No, no, no. That you is, know, an alternative. It's a technical to, term. That, that's the expression. Um, and, and you can put it any other The president has said that he's you know, still within his powers. He's still president until January the 7th, 2025. You, you, you heard Elton say a while ago that this is a Baumia inspired. Baumia is trying to salvage, you know, a very uh, terrible situation. Mm. Uh, you heard him trying to declare himself, you know, just a mere mate. Mm. He now says the economic management team is a subcommittee that only advises. Mm. So where it hasn't go well, it means they didn't listen to my advice, leave me out. You know, betraying the, the president, uh, removing himself from the mess, uh, it clearly hasn't worked. The Ghanaian people are not having any of that. So really, if you look at the situation we find ourselves in now. Mm. This is a president who has not been responsive, who has waited too long, and it is so late in the day. I don't see 10 months what uh, uh, this reshuffle will achieve. The harm has been caused already. The Ghanaian people have made up their minds. Yes, but, going, but, but going, better, going, better, going, better late, better late than, than never. When you look at the finance ministry, should what we are projecting happen? The Daily Guide has put forth some things we have already since last Friday. If, if Dr. Amin Anta takes over from Ken Oforiata, he'll come with his own mindset, fresh ideas. Uh, we've not heard of John Kuma. We don't know what will happen to him, the deputy. Uh, there's also health, for example. Okoboy, Dr. Okoboy, I'm sure he's a friend of yours. Fine gentleman. He was there as deputy, lost his parliamentary election, did not get the nod. Now he may be taking over from Kukwe Jumamenu. Some of them tired, actually. I mean, these, are, these are positive reshuffles, right? So you see, you 
put out the expression, better late than never. Mm -hmm. Our friends, the medical doctors, will tell you that it's not every medical condition that it is better late than, than, than never. There are times that if you don't present early and you miss certain milestones, mm. they will tell you that, look, you should have come long ago. Uh, your cancer has reached stage four. Um, it's now a terminal situation. It's nothing we can do to help you. Mm. I think that that's where we are now. Um, it's been seven years and more of intransigence, of um, lack of concili I mean, I mean, a conciliatory approach to governance. You've had MPP stalwarts, you know, from Kwame Pienim, Dr. Mwakuba, many of them saying that, look, the president is not listening to us. We don't know who we have elected. We campaign for him. He's changed. He's not listening to advice. He's become so impervious. You know, he will just have his way no matter what happens. And you had his um, uh, family members like Gabi Ochidako out there defending him, saying that he doesn't believe in reshuffles, um, no matter what the pressures are, no matter G how... Gabi says no, he's no, no longer involved in no, no local matter politics. Yeah, so but, 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 yeah, but he so offered... He offered, uh, he offered uh, some explanation, and don't fall for that, this whole claim that... No, I'm just telling you what yeah, he's... Yeah, but, 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 but don't fall for it. You know, they are trying to create the impression that they are not the ones bringing Baumia, he's his own man. It's not working. Uh, we all know what is happening behind the scenes. But back to the substantive point. If you look at what this president has done to our country, you know, if you look at the unprecedented levels of corruption, uh, if you look at the wastage, mm, the... The, 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 the reckless dissipation of scarce resources. As we speak, we have spent 339 million Ghana cities of taxpayer money to dig a pit, the world's most expensive pit, in the name of putting up the president's cathedral. You know, if you look at how much was... National cathedral, not the president's how much, cathedral. How much how did it become national? We were in parliament. We never had it. Well, debate. the name of the facility is the national we, cathedral. But, but you see... For, pro for projects to be national, you have to involve everybody. You must come to parliament. There has to be national ownership. Okay, so, let's, 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 so let's, let's streamline this. So yes. you're basically saying that instead of better late than never, this is too little, too late. Too little, too late. It will not solve um, any of the problems that we face, the hardship, the corruption, okay. the massive mm -hmm. unemployment, the total uh, desperation. Uh, that has engulfed this country. This um, dying moment uh, reshuffle by a lame duck president is not going to solve this situation. All right, so let's do this. Let's, let's head to Mepe. This came in because of the conversation I had had with uh, Elton. Let's head to Mepe. Quite a lot has happened there in recent times. I've heard uh, talk about the desire for water and some other reliefs that had been planned. But you have been doing quite a good job there. You even put up this facility. I want our viewers to watch this um, video footage, after which we'll come back into the studio and interrogate what it took to get to this level. We want people who can also support them also to support us. So now that the MP has taken it upon himself to put up that uh, big structure, which will accommodate 300 people.
All right, so that is the work that has been done, and you saw parts of, I believe that was the second yes. uh, housing project that housing you had put project. out there. Yes. Housing, going to house about 300. 300, yes. Have people moved in? Yes, yes, they have. And okay. uh, for this one, we prioritized uh, the aged, the fiscally challenged, and then we continued with the focus on single mothers. The first one was purely for single mothers and their children. This one, we're bringing in the aged and the physically challenged. As you do know, um, yes. You mentioned the third group, the aged physically challenged. And, and then single mothers. Um, okay. Yeah. Right. Um, so we, we, we have a dire humanitarian crisis on our hands. Mm. As we speak, five months down the lane, since the spillage from the Kosovo Ekpon dams on the 50th of September, you have our compatriots, our fellow Ghanaians, living in tents. Mm -hmm. According to NADMO, in North Town alone, 12,633 people were displaced. Uh, 1,540 homes were totally damaged. And so even though the water levels have receded, the people whose homes were destroyed have nowhere to go to. Mm -hmm. And they have to remain in congested classrooms. They have to remain in uh, tents um, provided by benevolent organizations. And so we took it upon ourselves that if we don't act fast, very soon the rains will be upon us. And these tents, even though we appreciate that they have helped to at least you know, uh, offer some satire, you cannot count on the tents to protect people fully when the raining season starts. Uh, in a few weeks from now. And that's why we've been working expeditiously. You notice that this project, we executed it in seven weeks. Seven weeks. Mm. And this is an enhanced uh, design where it's disability friendly. We added kitchens, we added TV rooms, we added storerooms mm. to the bedrooms. So if you look at the design, we have a large bedroom mm -hmm. for, for, for families, households. Mm -hmm. And then um, when you come out of the bedroom, you have shared facilities. So you have a shared kitchen, you have shared storerooms, you have shared TV rooms and meeting rooms. So it's right. a very communal, you know, living. We delivered this in seven weeks. And I want to take a moment to thank all of those who came to our aid. Um, I'll go through the list quickly. Uh, Togbi Kosi Nego of uh, Mepe uh, donated the land. Uh, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, my good self, um, I came up with 30% uh, of the donations, uh, or if you like, the cost of the project. Uh, the Right Honorable uh, Alban Sumana Kingsford Bagbin, the current speaker, Right Honorable Edward Doa Jaho, the former speaker, Her Ladyship uh, Justice Gertrude Arabai Sabah Tokono, the Chief Justice of Ghana, very generous. She came there to present donations from all the judges and the uh, Judicial Service of Ghana, Professor Nana Jenopoku Ajiman, Sheikh Dr. Osman Nuhu Sharbutu, the National Chief Imam. And the National Chief Imam was the first to donate uh, to this project 70,000 Ghana cities. And that is why we have named a whole block uh, after the National Chief Imam for his really inspiring example. Right. Togbi Apede, the 14th, the Christian Council of Ghana, Reverend Sudadama and Naba Ministries, Davida Rufin, Ghanaian staff of the United Nations. Uh, all the Ghanaians in the United Nations came together to contribute. The University of Ghana Business School, lecturers of whole technical university, Mr. Eric Sedi Kutoche, the executive chairman of the First Sky Group, Mr. and Mrs. Ruben Chachu Adoko. Goyle, Goyle PLC, the famous brand, um, they also contributed. St. George's Security Services, Madam Florence Enin, Mr. Felix Addo, Mark Ruben Kuba, J lawyer Jesse Jacinto, Hanifa Yaya, Mohammed Isa, Mr. Prosper Game, Mr. Nashuruddin Tahiro, NDC New Jersey Chapter, the Big Brothers Club of the Electricity Company of Ghana, Mr. Prosper Lechu, Rosa Foundation, the Central Group, Sweat Must Drop Youth Association in Bato, Stephen Inshraw, Data Few and Friends, Regulus Investment and Financial Services Limited, Just Wealth Limited, the Esbekans Association, who are Ghanaian professionals trained in Cuba, right. Kalovan Foundation, and then, of course, my, my dear wife, who I have to uh, 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 greet this morning and wish a, a happy Valentine. So this is the uh, list, and you see that it's quite uh, comprehensive. What we did in North Town is that we set up the Accountability Elders Council. So every f donation that comes in, it goes to the council. They open an account, a GCB account in Sogakopa. They are the signatories 
I am not a signatory. I stay away from all financial matters. Just to build so who are the signatories? Uh, uh, the Accountability Elders Council. Chaired okay, by, who and who are there? So it's chaired by Professor Emmanuel Neche Afedo, who is um, a very prominent son uh, from North Tom. He also has expertise in disaster management. He worked in Denmark for many years, but he's retired now. So he chairs the council, and we have the chiefs there. So Togbi Azagba is a secretary and also a signatory. Uh, he is uh, the warlord of MAPA in terms of you know, the, his role within the chieftaincy okay. uh, 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 authority. So it appears you so, have quite a system. That, so, so, that so, so we have place. a system, so mm -hmm. every donation that comes in, it goes to the council, they lodge into the account, and then that's how we have managed. Uh, this, I have some quick this, questions this, for you. So this, this, this the Accountability that. Elders Committee, you mentioned quite a list here. Yeah. Your, your own self, uh, you contributed 30%, former President Mahama, the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagmin, Doa Jaho, former Speaker, Chief Justice Tokonu, yeah. Professor Pukwa Jiman, uh, the Chief Imam, 70,000, Togbe Afede, the 14th, uh, Ghanaian to the UN, UGBS, Goyal, it goes on and on, yeah. right? Yes. I'd just like to find out from you, though, um, what's the total cost of the project? So the total cost is 2.5 million Ghana cities for this second one. 2.5 million Ghana yes, cities. Ghana that's, cities. that's for the second phase. The second, the second project we did. Right. The first one, which was sponsored by the First Sky Group, they inform us that that's uh, 1.2 million because uh, if you've noticed, this is quite uh, basic. This, this time we enhanced the design. Okay. We added kitchens, we added storerooms, we added uh, TV rooms. Uh, so you can understand that this one uh, will, will cost uh, a bit more than the, than the first one. And it's, 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 it's interesting uh, what 2.5 million... So when you say 2.5 million, you're talking of cities, right? Yes, yeah, cities. Ghana cities. Ghana cities. It's, right. it's interesting to see what 2.5 million Ghana cities can achieve uh, for 300 people to get them uh, respite, uh, to have roofs over their heads. Because, look, we have to ask ourselves as a country, is it really acceptable that five months down the line, these people have done nothing to deserve this, committed no crimes. According to VRA, if they didn't spill, the dam will break. We will all not have electricity. I mean, we've, we've been know. there and done yes. that. We are yes. moving so, forward in terms yes. of... Yes. So, do you feel so, not enough has been done from the people of Mefe? Yes. I, I, I think that government has been too lethargic. They've been mm. too slow. Um, I mean, if we, we don't receive taxes from the people, right. and yet we have been able to do this, you know, benevolent Ghanaians... But the president gave you that assurance. He said that maybe you, you may not vote for him all the time, but he gave you the assurance that he would do what has to be done. And they've so, done something. Yes, Nadmo has done all, something. So first of all, um, the president should... There have been lots of donations. The president should not have been talking about votes. Mm. You know, what matters is that we are all Ghanaians, we all pay taxes. Mm. It shouldn't matter. And you know, he repeated that when he met the Ekumfi people. He should stop saying those things. All of us are Ghanaians. When elections are over, they are over. Look, as MP, executing this mandate, you know I didn't get 100%. Right. In North, it's, not really, it's not really possible. I don't know of any politician who's got 100%. Mm. But in, 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 in carrying out all these interventions, whether it's the scholarships are provided, whether it's the rent for 167 teachers, whether it's the renovations, whether it's the school bags, the school mm. shoes, mm. the school uniforms, we are not asking anybody for party cards. We don't care how you vote. Which, which should you be know, the case. That, so, should, that, so that, that is the, how There are no be. political colorations, no political things. At all. So, let, let's, so, so, let's, so let's we want to see, more. We want mm. to see the government you know, rise up to its obligations. They must wake up and, 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 and really come to the assistance of our people. Yes, we are helping, but mm. there are still many people who remain in the tents. And, it, 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 it's, it, How many people are in tents right it's, now? It's a scar How many people are in tents? About, about 2,500 people. Uh, if you look at those in Mepet de Gome, if you look at those living in Agbetipo, if you add those at the Bato Die camp, those at the Dofwa de Doma camp, those at the Fojoku camp, the Alabonu camp, you put all of this together, you're talking about 2,500 people. 2,500 people. So yeah. another 2,500 people still need proper shelter. They are in tents. Yes. We saw some of the tents. Yes. And now they need proper shelters. Yes. 2,500 Yes, people. they have to be resettled. And okay. later we must have a discussion about compensation because they've lost their farms, they've lost their livelihoods, they've lost their properties. I mean... We, we must Is that a better. conversation as MP you started? Yes. You started that conversation? Yes, yes, yes. Whom I've, have you I've, spoken to? I've made statements on the floor. Um, uh, when the finance minister visited us at the peak of the disaster, uh, before our chiefs and the media, I made a point clearly that we will expect 
resettlement and compensation is a matter of right. It is only fair. Uh, I repeated same when the Minister of Education visited us. I have filed questions in Parliament about this matter. So what has to be done by a member of Parliament in terms of leading the advocacy, uh, in terms of reminding government of its you know, obligations under the Constitution? I keep doing that. Okay, so let, let's, let's break apart a bit of the project. I want some further clarity. The first project, the yes. first facility, Yes. did you contribute towards that? Yes, so the, 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 that was a beautiful partnership. Uh, so the chiefs uh, provided land, they are very chiefs. Um, then First Sky Group provides the fiscal structure. So okay. I then come in with the furnishing. I provided the beds and the funds. And then I'm, I'm supporting them with their light bills. Okay, so first guy put up the edifice, the, the chiefs edifice. provided the land, Yes. you provided furniture and fans. Yes, and then, and, and then um, light bills. Um, that's and light the, bills. Yeah, the, the assurance to um, the occupants. All right, how, how much did all of this cost you? The, with the, 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 first, the furniture fans, furniture lights. fans, um, that should be running into about 200,000 cities. 200,000 cities. Yeah. All right, and not to talk about the light bills, and that will fluctuate, so yes. we will not yeah. necessarily get yeah. into that. But I also, so let's say that your contribution for the first project was 200,000 Ghana cities. Uh, you said that for the second project, you contributed 30%. Yes. 30% of 2.5 million is 750,000 Ghana cities, correct? Yes. Okay, so um, with all of these sums of money, how, how do you manage? How, how did you manage to take care of all of the 750,000? Almost, so if you put them together, 950,000, almost 1 million Ghana. Yes, um, so what, what do you need to recognize is that for the support from the MP's office, uh, we do have the MP's common fund that mm -hmm. comes in. Um, so you, 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 you put uh, that in the mix. And then uh, for the second project, the Accountability Elders Council, they announced that I had guaranteed uh, a facility um, which we raised. And we are hoping that as and when donations come in, we can retire the facility. So it's, it's, it's a lot of creativity. Um, you have to raise a facility when you have to. You need to use the MPs Common Fund if you have to. You have to talk to friends and well-wishers. Uh, when you have to. Because, you see, sitting idle cannot be an option. I mean, if you look at the uh, traumatic situation, what people are going through, I mean, you have 80-year-olds, 90-year-olds, you know, they don't deserve to live under these conditions. And, 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 and as a local leader, you can't, you know, throw your hands in despair. You have to make an effort, and that's what we're doing. So how much of this came out of your MP's common fund? So you, about, 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 I'd say about, about 20%, 25%. So 20% of, of 1 million would give you about 200,000. I mean, it's yeah. 950,000, not yeah. 1 million. So that may give you about 185,000, yeah. 190,000. Yeah. yeah. And the rest came out of your pocket? No, the rest, I, I said we raise a facility um, with the accountability. No, I mean, I mean of the 950,000. So if 20% came out of your the MPC common fund. fund, then the rest came out of your pocket? Yes, raising a facility. Um, um, that we hope to retire as more donations come in because we have to. I, I just want clarity on that. It came out of your pocket. So when, about seven hundred fifty thousand came out. No, of when you raise Samuel, a when, no, when you pocket. raise a facility, it's not from your pocket. No, no, it's you're not. Going you're, for you're not getting my point. Let's break it down. Yeah, you said that this is a hundred percent project, right? Mm -hmm. The entire sum is two point five million Ghana yes. cities. You said you contributed 30 percent. Yes. Out of the 30 percent, which is about 750,000 cities, mm -hmm. and mind you, for the first project, you have spoken about furniture, yeah. fans. Mm -hmm. We've not even added electricity. Mm -hmm. That's another 200,000, yes. right? Which gives you a total of 950,000, almost 1 million Ghana cities, 50,000 yes. shy. I'm just saying. And you said that out of this, 20 yeah. percent came from your common fund, yes. which is about 185,000, yeah. 190,000. Mm -hmm. So it means the rest of the about 750,000 came from your pocket, right? Because that was your personal contribution. You raise a facility, mm -hmm. go, you go for a loan, mm -hmm. which the, the, the Professor Nature Federal led council is aware. And they announced that at the, at the launch, if you talk to your colleagues who were at the, at the event. And we're hoping to retire that as more donations come in. So okay. it's not personal pockets. But you went for a loan? Exactly. That's, you took a loan? Yes. That's, to do this? Yes. That's, so that's, who's repaying the loan? That's, 
you're not listening to me. I say that as donations come in, then we retire it. Okay, so yes. the loan was taken by the group. Exactly. So that as funds come in, exactly. then, then we retire you defray it. the debt. Exactly. Exactly. So it didn't which, come from your pocket? Which was announced. Yes, no, not from my pocket. That's why I said okay. we raised the facility. Okay. Yes. Let's, let's look at this. So eventually, in, in terms of retiring the loan or retiring the facility, when all of this is said and done and the people have been relocated, this will be the final bit on MEPE. Yeah. When the people have been relocated, um, what happens to the facility? Are you going to turn it into a school, a hospital? I'm just thinking, what, what yes, do you no, do no. then with the facility? So brilliant question. We announced at the commissioning that the plan now is to turn those two facilities, and if we do build more, we don't have a tertiary institution in the entire town enclave, not North Town, not Central Town, not South None. Town. None. No tertiary, no nursing training college, no college of education for our teachers, no, no university. Mm. So after secondary school, everybody has to leave town. You know? So the plan is that we will use these facilities as the fulcrum. Uh, fortunately, we have fantastic facilities like the Batok Catholic Hospital where you can have clinicals if you set up a nursing school. They can go there for their practicals. So the plan now, and we've told them, uh, and actually very soon our lawyers will be done with the agreements they will be signing because we don't want any litigations uh, soon. Uh, we, 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 we want to give people about three to four years uh, of you know, grace period uh, to live in there, hoping that by that time, government's resettlement projects will be completed, uh, hopefully. Then they move into their own resettled homes, final uh, evacuation. Then these buildings can serve as the structures that we can use for a nursing training institute. Okay. Uh, so that the Batok Adley Hospital, which is really renowned in terms of its uh, services. I mean, if you talk to a lot of the practitioners Gynecology, for example, pediatrics. I know a lot of people I mean, yeah, go there. Yeah, I don't yes. know about now, but yeah, for yeah, fibroid still, surgery, yes, yeah, and yeah. I know a still, lot of yes, people very, from Accra. Yeah, yes, there. Dr. Tuguba and his colleagues, fantastic mm. doctors. I mean, mm. people always speak excellently about them. You know, so we are hoping that uh, having that advantage, we can leverage on that with these um, facilities that we are building to serve as the first tertiary institution for that enclave, mm. uh, a nursing training institute. So that's the vision moving forward when uh, hopefully we are fully out of the woods. Okay, I want us to focus briefly on parliament because mm -hmm. that, that's your house, that's yeah. where you play, so to speak, and you are a multiple term uh, member of parliament. Uh, when you look at the eighth parliament, how it's performed, looking at the fact that we are going into another electoral cycle, going to embrace the ninth uh, parliament, and some of what has happened in both the NDC and the MPP, where stalwarts are either not going anymore or they did not win their primaries and all of that. Some have said this means that the quality of the ninth parliament is going to be low. And you have the majority leader, he's not coming back. Um, and, and so many other dynamics. Um, what, do you, what would you say to that, that question about the quality of parliamentarians and whether that will be affected on the back of, especially on the majority side, some of the losses they've incurred? I, I think we need to have a nuanced discussion about this phenomenon. And, you know, you have to be careful not to create the impression as though every new entrant coming into the house doesn't have something good to offer just because they are new. I mean, they are first-term MPs who have made such an impact. Um, if I look at the young MPs like the Honorable Isaac Adongo, the Honorable Francis Xavier Susu, who are, uh, you know, younger in the house, younger to me, uh, and others, I don't think that you will say that they have not made a meaningful addition. I, I would argue that they have been phenomenal. So it is not always the case that longevity necessarily um, amounts to a positive addition. Even though I am going to concede that because of how the house is, you know, quite regimented, quite technical, uh, you know, you, have, you must master the standing orders, master our 
procedures and practices and conventions. You need some time uh, to, to, to catch up and become well versed in those arenas. But I think that we need to find a fine balance. You know, you also want to show that the institution is growing. Mm. You are having, you know, uh, fresh impetus every now and then. So I think that we should always go. So there's for, a fine balance. We should always go new for faces. The, we should always go old, for the fine balance. Yes, and I think that yeah, it it blends it blends nicely. So I'm not one who will just dismiss every young person coming because if that was the case, some of us you wouldn't would, have would not have been given the the opportunity. And I don't think that as relatively young MPs. Um, we have done badly, even though I'll leave that verdict for the people to make. So I, 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 I get a sense that there's a lot of apprehension out there, but I am not too disturbed. I think that uh, the institution will thrive. All of these people who are senior today and are leaving were young, and they still made their impact when they came in uh, freshly. What I will add, though, is that we should encourage a culture of uh, parliamentary career politicians, as we have in other jurisdictions. Right. You know, I mean, there are people who have been in Congress for yes, yes, they've been there their entire yes, lives, their entire lives, and we should encourage that here. In no time, you start hearing, oh, it's been there for too long. Uh, uh, I've also done you well. Know, there are parliamentarians know. who have been there for 20 plus yes, years. Yes, Alban but, Bagman. Yeah, except that there are not many. Um, yeah. um, um, yes, They've yes. been there for yeah. forever. They are, and, and they are rare breeds. They are rare mm. breeds. Uh, they, they, we, we have, the attrition rate in the Ghanaian parliament is amongst the highest. But, but isn't, anywhere, isn't anywhere it also about two things? One, the quality of people, and then two, the fact that it is very political here. The, those yeah. establishments you're comparing us to, Congress and the yeah. rest, they do a fine job. They have staff. They, they yeah. go by yeah. the book. Yes, the politics yeah. is there, Republican and uh, Democrat, yeah. but they have a system here it is extremely partisan. It is extremely partisanly political. So obviously, we can't say same and expect people to be there for you, four decades or five decades. So you do have a point about the extreme partisanship. And I think that uh, we need to, as an institution, even get the message that voters are delivering to us now. See, for the first time, we have a hung parliament. And, and you're seeing a lot of what we call in Ghanaian parlance, skirt and blouse voting. Mm. Uh, so you see a certain desire by the electorate that go to parliament and, 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 and reduce the partisanship, mm. seek our interests. When the executive gets out of range, they become unhinged. You should rein them in. And I think that uh, so far as that expectation is concerned, we, 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 we haven't done much. We must do better. We must all concede as a house mm -hmm. that if you look at the three arms of government, this is, this is, this is a very you know, uh, overwhelming view out there that the legislative arm has been the weakest. And, and, and some say it's a function of the constitution. I say that it is both the function of the constitution and the people who we stand there. Because really, nobody puts a gun to your head uh, to engage in the extreme partisanship. Mm. Um, you should be able to put the country first and, and pursue you know, a nationalistic, patriotic agenda mm. and, and leave that to your conscience. Even if you may suffer within your party, I, I don't think that um, that should deter you from doing what you should do. So it's not just merely the issue of constitutional provisions, but it is also you know, the caliber of persons and right. their personal creed uh, that they go into parliament with. So I, 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 I think that back to the point I was making, we need to really encourage more parliamentary career politicians who go to parliament just because they want to be legislators, they want to be lawmakers, and not because they want to catch the eye of the how president. Do we do that? How, do, how, do we, how do we do perhaps, that? Perhaps. Perhaps. That is ideological, whatever trainings. How do we get there? Do we have to have a system? There are yeah. career diplomats. Yes. Okay? My yes. own uncle yes. was a career ambassador here and yeah. there. There are those who chart that course yes. and, and that path, and there are things to do. How do we do the same for legislators? I agree with the... And briefly, briefly on that point. Very briefly, I agree with the Constitutional Review Commission's work that 
we should amend that constitutional provision that mandates presidents to appoint majority of their ministers from parliament. I think that that has been really the bane, and that is what has reduced the potency of parliament. So people go to parliament hoping that they will catch the eye of the president. And when announcements are made, for example, soon there will be these reshuffles and all of that, those MPs who are left out, who don't make the list, uh, it's as if you are an outcast. It's as if you are not a good MP. <laughs> you know. Meanwhile, you didn't go to parliament. The people didn't vote for you in their constituency right. to become a minister. Mm. They were voting for their MP you know, to represent them in parliament, not in cabinet or the executive. Right. So I think that that constitutional amendment will help. And let's have a more assertive, a more independent parliament, mm. and let's encourage you know, more parliamentary career. And it's, it's start from us. I mean, we should not always be beholden to the executive, looking for favors from the executive. Right. We should be content with our conditions of service in the house, and we should, we should work in a way that we will earn, you know, that respect that we deserve. And, 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 and I really think that that will be the solution. All right, so two quick questions on Parliament, and, and then we can move on to other things. We're still going to be talking about Baumier's speech and what, what was in there, uh, GRA, the SML issues, uh, the, the anti-gay bill, among others. Uh, but, but quickly, um, so on, on going back to, to Parliament and everything in between, there have been some projections from some people that um, you're going to have a wide majority in Parliament come the ninth Parliament. Do you subscribe to that? And what are your projections and, and why? I've been looking at the polls and um, it's, 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 it's a scientific uh, projection. It's based Scientific on, by who? It's, it's by based, the NDC? It's based on evidence. No, be looking at the polls. If you, if you follow what uh, uh, the Global Info Analytics uh, has been doing, Musa Danquez Group, and you also consider our own internal uh, polling, you will realize that there is really a groundswell of support for the NDC, not only for our parliamentary candidates, but also for our flag bearer. Uh, there is no doubt that we are winning and we're going to win massively. And, and largely, uh, it's due to the abysmal performance. The but you say you're going the, to win the, massively, the, presidential the, the, or parliamentary? Both, both presidential both. and parliamentary. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a very, very uh, convincing and working majority, as is described in the... Uh, terminologies. But having said that, we are not complacent. We are not saying that, look, it's in the back, and so we are going to rest on our oars. We're working very hard. We consider there have been times that we could have been more vigilant. There have been times that we allow, um, we, we allow all kinds of things to happen, you know, behind the scenes uh, that uh, denies the people the right to have their votes properly counted. So we are working on all of those, 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 those areas. I'm confident in the uh, Dr. Omani Buama-led election directorate. They've brought in a lot of reforms, very exciting um, new uh, ways of uh, tightening you know, Are you going to be able to monitor the, the order, elections order, this order, time around and get your yes. facts yes. That's, on, that's, that's, on, on the minute that's, rather than what exactly, we saw in the last election? That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's exactly mm. what I'm talking about. So we, we are humble enough, uh, honest enough to uh, concede that there have been some of those election management areas where we have fallen short, not met the expectation of our voters. Look, when people go through all of that hassle, the queues, under the vagaries of the weather, they expect their votes to count. They expect right. you to respect their mandate, you know, that they have given to you. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to solve all those problems. And I'm, I'm really impressed with what uh, the money board. You're, you're going to solve, which means you've not solved, solved yet. Um, so when I put it that way, I want the election outcome, how we conduct ourselves on December 7th, to speak for itself. Okay, you know, all right. That, that yeah, by December yeah. 7th, Ghanaians will be impressed with what we do. So we're very confident. Look, if you see the quality of work that MPs have done in opposition, I'm told in the polls that any time uh, research is conducted, uh, NDC MPs feature prominently in terms of MPs who are really serving their people who are out there who are not disappointing their electorate. And, and I think that in all humility, uh, we have to continue that way. 
my colleagues and do, I. Do, do, you have, do you have a projection in terms of the numbers you're hoping to get? Oh, yes. I mean, we, we don't expect anything less than 180 seats. Um, from, from the way things are looking, and, 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 and it could be... It so, could be so 275, you're expecting about 180. Yeah. You, are, you, you are hoping to leave the MPP with about 95 seats. Yes, it's, it's, it's very possible, very possible. I mean, so your projection, yeah. I mean, is that you could get about what? About 180 seats, yeah. 180 seats, yes. which would give you a dominant majority yes. in Parliament. Yeah. That's your projection yes. for 2020. I mean, yeah, that's, that's what the polls are telling us. Um, if if they are to be believed, and uh, we don't have cause to doubt. All right. Know, since since we're talking politics, I'll get to the EC shortly, but I just have a question. The former president, Mahama, um, he's spoken about ex gratia packages and all of that, which you've benefited from, right? He has benefited from, we you have benefited yes, from, it, it, all it, of it, you who have served up to this point it, since Kufour have benefited from. Yes, but, but, but should, let, me, let, let me just it, ask it, you it this. Stop Are us. you willing to forfeit it? Because that's where he stoked conversation on that. Are you willing to forfeit that? Do you think it's the right direction to go? Absolutely. And, and if you've been following my writings, I probably started talking about this way back, even even before it became a topical issue in recent times. And I, I noticed that Dr. Baumier has also now caught up uh, with with this uh, be, I mean, position, albeit you know, belatedly. Look, I take the view that there are ways that this whole you know uh, exiting packages can be managed better. If you take MPs, for example, as I speak to you, as MP in this eight parliament, I don't know my conditions of service. We wait. You set up the emoluments committee later. The president sets it up very late. But they say day. that is done intentionally you know, so that yeah. you can get and accumulated then, then money you accumulated. Yeah. But, and, but, but you, and, and, you and, fed into that system. The NBC has done the same why thing. Why do we keep doing that? Mm -hmm. Because, look, a lot of what people complain about is gracia, is gracia. A lot of it is just accumulated because as organized labor, is negotiating and every year you are getting either a 10 percent increase or a 30 percent increase getting cola and all of those things we are left out you know it's, it's we we wait to the last minute at the end of your tenure then it is all put together lump sum then it becomes a huge figure you know and then there is such an uproar why don't we have a system and i i subscribe to what the uk did recently where you have an independent emoluments commission. Because you see, even how it is done in Ghana, you know, ab initio, crazy impression that, look, this is going to be a, 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 a scratch my back, I scratch your back. The president is, is, is appointing, uh, and then we, we, we have to approve that of the executive. They approve that of the so legislature. If you do me, I do you. Yeah, so depending on how we are watching. So if you make me fine, I go do you fine. It's, it's, not, it's not helpful. So let us have an independent emoluments commission, as the UK has done recently. And they should be in charge of everybody, not only politicians. Because I keep saying that, look, the political class should, so, should consciously take away the things that bring us into opprobrium. The matters that consistently, you know, puts us on a collusion course with the electorate, with the Ghanaian people, is totally needless. It can be avoided. Let, let, let me just clarify. Did you say, just because of what's on the screen, did you say 180 or 190 seats? 180. 180. 180. So, 180 not so, so we'll clarify that. Yes, we hope to secure 180. 180. Yes. Seats in Parliament, that's what, I, I just had to uh, take a quick look at that, 180 seats, yes. um, you said. Yes, right. yes. So, 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 so I support that it should be scrapped, that S. Gresha should be scrapped. I support um, total reforms. I, I am for constitutional overhaul. I'm also for setting up an independent emoluments commission. Let's remove this from, you know, um, the clause of the executive and the legislature. Uh, and then you also bring in the head of the judiciary uh, along the way. Let's, 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 let's remove that. It, it's, it, it, it lends itself to a certain perception that we're just sorting ourselves out. It's so self-serving. It is, it is, it is, it is. So you're in agreement. So, so we, we should find a better way of doing so it and, and let it yes. go, basically. Yes. Are you also let in agreement go. that maybe Article 71 should be taken a, a deeper look at? Maybe we should even scrap it. 
Yes. Article 71 yes. office holders. Yes. I mean, yeah, it creates the impression as though we have some special class of workers. Mm. You know, it, 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 so it, that it, article of the Constitution should be looked at. Yes, it should be looked at. Because I, I think that when we set up the Independent Emoluments Commission, that looks at the whole gamut of public sector workers. Mm. I even thought that that was a philosophy behind single spine. Let's all be, let's right. all have a single spine. Let's, let's, let's have a common system that works for all of us. And single spine hasn't lived up to expectations. Yeah. Okay. Look, so, you know that in this country, as mm -hmm. we speak, mm -hmm, you have some CEOs who earn more than their ministers who supervise them. True. Earn more than their president. There are some who have been earning 70,000, yeah. 80,000. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It, it, it's been like that for yeah, a 120,000, yeah. <laughs> you know, earning more than the president, earning more than the vice president. I mean, it's... So I mean, even come to think of it, if, and we'll get to the GRA, yeah, but even there, you would, yeah, you, you would see that as well. Uh, quickly, before, before we get into those other issues, I want us to make the most of the time before we hit the top of the sure. hour. The Electoral Commission, since we're talking about parliament and everything, it all boils down to, yes, the institution in charge of delivering elections, ensuring that everything is done properly, and that it is free, fair, transparent. Um, it has come through with some reforms, some of which have come through Parliament, including the talk of not using indelible ink in the next election and all of that. What do you make of the current EC? It's posturing, especially as um, the NDC is back on IPAC. What do you think your expectations would be from the Electoral Commission? To be very sincere with you, my brother, I take the view that the current EC, led by Madame Jean Mensa, are not building consensus and they are trying to fix matters that are not broken. They are trying very hard to stir the hornet's nest, uh, to create chaos when they shouldn't be doing that. And I would advise them to listen carefully to the most celebrated uh, electoral commissioner, not only in Ghana, but on the African continent, Dr. Kujio Farijan. Um, at the beginning of the year, I. Uh, attended his lecture at UPSA, and he called on the Electoral Commission to give consensus a chance that in these matters, it's always better to proceed based on consensus. There's been so many mistakes this EC has made. I mean, remember the attempt not too long ago uh, to say that if you don't have a Ghana card, you cannot uh, get registered. When they should have known that not everybody has a Ghana card and that the whole you know, uh, Ghana identification system is still work in progress and they've not reached anywhere, particularly if you come to rural Ghana. I, I asked in Parliament for a district breakdown up to now. The NIA has not been able to provide the district breakdown because they know they'll be exposed. They only put out ballpark figures. But if you come to rural no, the Ghana, fact that they've not given you, it you know, to you doesn't mean they are. No, they I mean, I've sent, I've sent, I mean, let's be fair to them. I've sent, no, I've sent several reminders. Mm. I mean, I've written to them and they will not even give us the decency uh, of a reply. Uh, but we, we will get them. We know what parliamentary uh, orders to, to activate and we will get them. But you see, when you look at the latest reforms that the EC is proposing, this indelible ink, where, where from that? We all know. That. They say they have the systems, biometric and otherwise, to deal with it, and so you don't even need the indelible ink. I mean, in other jurisdictions, they don't use indelible ink, do they? The UK and other places, they don't use indelible ink. Look, the, I know of some jurisdictions who use them. But generally they don't. Yeah, some don't, some do. And look, our biometric system is not foolproof. Remember that in the processes, you are allowed when you cannot be verified. Mm. You, are, you are allowed to engage in manual voting. You are allowed. Mm. Now, for those people who, you know, they just can't get their thumbprints, they can't just, the system cannot, you know, capture them. What's the guarantee that they will not, you know, go about engaging in multiple voting? Look, this is so needless, totally needless. It has served us well. Let us keep it. I mean, and... And, 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 and on this matter, let me commend the Honorable Majority Leader, um, the Honorable Oseche Mensabo. So this is a matter which I do not see the usual nauseating extreme partisanship. You know, he has eloquently stated that he doesn't support this. You know, this business of when we are in power, everything the Electoral Commission says we have to support. 
uh, we must align with them. And then uh, as soon as there is a change of power, there is a flip. The uh, impression is created as though, you know, the Electoral Commission uh, is out uh, to get the opposition. So that's why I commend the, the, the majority leader for, for his posture on some of these reforms. Then also the attempt to change the date. That's a major issue. Why not engage From the December parties? 7 to yes. November 7. Yeah. Right. Have, 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 have um, detailed conversation. Because I remember we've been here before. We proposed it, I remember, under President Mahama, the MPP at the time <coughs> opposed it. Um, now the Electoral Commissioner <coughs> is bringing this back. Couldn't we have broad consultation. Dr. So, Farijan, so based on what did you propose it then? Dr. Farijan, no, you see, we were, we were saying that the transitional period mm. uh, appears short. And it came out of a lot of... So if the, you proposed it then, why, the don't you, why don't you accept it now? No, we're saying that for now, let's, let's have a discussion. Let's build consensus. You but know, they've had those discussions know, at IPAC. At a no, point, they we, said no, over 50% of you we, would subscribe we, to we, it for 2024. We were not others there. Others were saying remember, it should go to 2024. Remember, we were not there. Remember, we were not there. But you joined recently? Yes, we've only joined recently, a few days ago. Uh, so we're saying that, look, slow down on these matters. The Afarijan approach, which has worked, and it, look, it's, we, 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 we saw a lot of reforms that took place under Dr. Afarijan, from opaque ballot boxes to you know, transparent ballot boxes and, 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 and biometric systems and all of that. Let us have a way of building consensus. Mm -hmm. You know, when you spring a surprise on the parties, we just hear an announcement out there. We are key stakeholders. You know, this business of even wanting to uh, reduce the voting hours, you know, what's going into that? So the, a lot of these things that have been tried and tested that have served us well, they have worked. <laughs> Why is the Electoral Commission? I mean, the budget they brought to Parliament. And look, it, it costs us so much on elections, for, mm. for, for those who do not know, between 700 million and, 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 and a billion, if you look at um, the last two, three elections. So in those um, budget demands, you have all of these items. And nobody has said that there is no money or there can be no funding for this item. How much? really is an indelible in compared to disputed elections, which can destabilize our country and, and, and what that will mean, you know, for the larger peace and stability, you know, of, of, of the sub-region. Okay. So, All right. so my, my honest view on these matters is that the Jin Mensah led, Bosman Asari led Electoral Commission should slow down. They should build consensus. They should engage the parties. They should focus on matters that will improve, you know, transparency. Okay. That will improve the credibility of our elections, and not these things that really just, you know, stoke uh, the 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 embers and and, and 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 just you know creates a certain tension which can okay. be avoided. All right. Um, I I see some of your people from Parliament also getting on. Uh, I see my big sister Kate Ado. Uh, watching. Uh, good to know you are actually following the conversation. So that if Okujato, he does anything, you can pepper him when he <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I see a lot of your messages. Should time suffice, we'll try to take a few of them. But very quickly, um, so there's also the bit about the speech of, of the Vice President, now flag bearer of the MPP. He talks about scrapping certain levies and taxes, prominent among them the e-levy, taxes on betting, among others, to the tune of about 5.9 billion Ghana CDs. Um, the Guta president, Dr. Joseph Obeng, and you remember the TUC boss, when Mahama came through with his 24-hour economy, he said it was a game changer, and your party stuck to it. Well, guess what? For this bit on taxes, after the vice president was done, uh, Dr. Joseph being Guta president, said he was excited by what the vice president had said and that that was the way to go. So e-levy and taxes on betting among the others to go. He says national service will be optional. He says in terms of contracts, there will be transparency. They will be pub published publicly for public scrutiny among others. Um, what do you make fundamentally of what the vice president had to say? I mean, it goes beyond this, but in a nutshell, what were your takeaways from his bid? And of course, he's also proposing a 24-hour economy based on uh, mobile money interoperability, among others. Quick thoughts. Yes, so I would like to make the point fundamentally that 
We have come to a point as a country where I think that we should place more premium on action than just rhetoric, than just talk. Um, when you are vice president, chair of the economic management team, you have... But, but you know that, that thing, you have, what, what, that thing you just mentioned, it's a convention. It's not a... It's, it's not setting you have, stone. You're a member of the, the economic management team. You have... You no, you agree, right? I want you to agree before agree you... Agree with what? I don't get your point. A vice what? president is a member of the economic management no, team. Nowhere, nowhere does it say he is, he is chair. Not in our constitution. It's a convention. Yes, the convention is that he chairs. The vice president... The convention is that he's a member. We have documents. I've cited documents mm -hmm. pointing to John Romani Mahama when he was... You know, yeah, and it, they, it invited him to be a member. Yeah, of, but of, they, preside, of, they preside over the meetings. Mm. The, from the vice president at Tamils' era to vice president, you know, Ali Umar, they preside over. That has been the But presiding doesn't necessarily mean it's, they are in charge, it's, right? It's, 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 it's a convention. That's what the vice president says. When did the vice president come to this recognition? When he fired 170 questions to Amy vice Sarata. president Amy Sarata. He didn't know then that he was just a member. That he he was, says he's he, a mate. He was, he's not yes, a driver. He's that, a mate. That he was just a mate. He didn't know that. You see how time, you know, time vindicates. And how with time, people fall into their own traps. But back to the more substantive point I want to make. Is that let us place more premium on action, on track record. I mean, see what we've been achieving in North Tone. With virtually no taxes, little resources, we are not organizing lectures. There's not been a lot of talk and razzmatazz, but we are just getting the job done mm. to ameliorate the plight of our people. I think that we should place more premium on that. So that's the first fundamental point that I, I, I want to make, that moving forward, Ghanaians have seen through the talkativeness and a lot of, you know, uh, you know, puffing and huffing, a lot of just hubris, just talk. People want to see. Let, let, people, I, I get it. Ghanaians are beyond people the, want the to cosmetics. See. They want. Exactly. But let's talk they, about the, they, they, the, they, the they, pertinent they, they want to see track record. Mm -hmm. Now, let's come to the matter of taxes, which you want us to focus on. Mm -hmm. So, I hold in my hands the IMF country report number 23168, which was issued in May 2023. Now, you had the vice president creating the impression as if all of these taxes and all of that, he is not part of it, he doesn't support it, and um, he's going to scrap it. If you look at this document, page two of the document, this is the very early part of the document. The approval of this agreement is stated here, approved by and we are told that discussions took place in Accra in September, in Washington, D.C., mm. in October, and in Accra in December 2022. The mission held discussions with Vice President Baumia, Minister of Finance Kanofriata, Governor of the Central Bank, N.S. Addison, and other senior officials. Then it goes on to list the officials. As on, members of the economic on, on, on their On their part. So the, uh, the dishonest attempt to create the impression as though he didn't even have discussions with the IMF, he didn't lead the negotiations, he's not part of it. Because we all know that a lot of these taxes and a lot of these you know, uh, fiscal impositions are from the IMF agreement, which he led, as this IMF document confirms. Now, if you come to page 16 of this document, we are told the document that confirms that Dr. Balomir led the discussions and the agreements. We are told at page 16 that the Power Utilities Regulatory Commission, PURC, mm. recently raised electricity tariffs by close to 30%, which was a prior action, prior mm. action. Mm. So what Dr. Baumia's Ken Ofreata and co. signed up to before we will get this funding from the IMF, the prior action, what they agreed was that electricity tariffs should go up by 30%. Mm. Then it continues, bringing the cumulative increase since mid-2022 to 57% to help reduce the cost recovery gap and limit this year's shortfall to around 2.7% of GDP, offsetting underlying upward pressures from a more depreciated exchange rate. Additional quarterly tariff adjustments will be implemented in 2023 
and you know it's been going on already, to compensate for any exchange rate and price movements and to bring tariffs close to cost recovery levy, while efforts to improve operational efficiency of en energy distribution as planned in the ESRP. So the dishonesty, if you come to pay 13 of this agreement, again, the IMF reports that as part of measures to address the challenges with revenue mobilization, there's going to be a removal on all VAT exemptions, P13 of the document. Mm. So the VAT on ECG, which had been exempted, right. they agreed. Dr. Baumia? He's, he said that if it is still on the books in 2025, should he become president? So, he will scrap it. So why the dishonesty? Why did you sign us up to this? But he's saying he will scrap it. Why did you agree? Same with the E-Levy. Where was he? When we opposed this, even went to court, remember all the stalemate in parliament? But, but, but it's, it's, it's his administration in power. Do so, you want him to come out openly so, and say, so, so, I, I disagree with this fundamentally? So it's, it's clear, it's clear mm. that Dr. Bamia cannot be trusted. He meets with the IMF in secret, imposes these draconian taxes on us, these obnoxious taxes, this hardship on us, this agony, the anguish that we are going through. The suffering that we are going through. Mm. This is a man who not too long ago was talking about teachers are suffering, doctors are suffering, nurses are suffering, everybody is suffering. And see what he does in secret. Then he comes out, UPSA, and then he's talking as if he's not part of it. I thank God for this IMF document, and I'm glad that the IMF keeps records. Mm. So I'm saying that he cannot be trusted. And I am very, very proud of my minority leader, the announcement he put out yesterday on uh, your colleague uh, Evans Mensah's show last night. PM that, Express. Yes, that we have decided as a matter of strategy that since Dr. Baumia now agrees with us, we are going to present a private member's motion okay. to have all of these taxes repealed now. Why should we wait? He now agrees. Why are us. you trying to force so, the vice president's so, hand? So the he's vice president. So so the he, vice president. He is still the mate. The he's vice not, president. He's the not the, the driver. Vice president he's who, not the driver. The vice president who sat in secret with the IMF and approved all of these taxes. Mm. They should now. They have an opportunity. We are going to bring the private members' bill. They should. That, that will say what? That will say what? That that remove the VAT on the so 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 remove you're going to provide e -levy. Right, yes a private members bill yes that says repeal e levy e levy taxes on betting taxes on betting ten percent yes uh, taxes, VAT on yes. electricity yes 15%. we want to test his sincerity now we are not going to wait till after the polls because so, wait, so when are you planning when, on doing this this meeting of the of before Easter we are going to do that. I see. Latest by next week, we are, we, are, we, are, we are going to be waiting for the speaker's approval. So you're going We've to actually test, crafted it. You are literally going to exactly. test his sincerity. Dr. Baumier's resolve exactly. and his sincerity his in sincerity. this matter. Absolutely. But, 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 okay, let's look at it from this angle. Because we can't, see, said, we can't see you approving these things with the right. IMF in secret. Then right. you come and stand on public lanterns. But, but I'll are, go back to the uh, fact. You are deceiving. He's still the mate, not the driver. He's not the president. In this says, when he comes to power, if he comes to power, he will actually see to some of this. He said that if the VAT on electricity takes off, should he become president, he will scrap it. He says same you for know, the You know, it is instructive that in this IMF document, they don't even mention the president. They didn't meet with President Kufado. Mm -hmm. That's the confidence but, President Kufado but, has. But that's, the vice because, president. that's because it's the vice president who's on the economic management team, not good, the president. Good, good. You see, I said recently that I'm beginning to, for the first time in a long time, Mm. Pity President Akufuado. He's become so lonely, so abandoned, so jettisoned. Why has he come to you to say that he's lonely? Oh, look at the treachery. Everybody, look, indeed, the saying is true that success has many fathers, failure is an orphan. His general secretary abandoned him recently. Oh, Richard, your people are useless, they're not working. Then uh, the national organizer. On, on VAT on election. Yes, VAT, let it go. You are making our work difficult. They distance themselves from him. Then his vice president puts the icing on the cake. Me, I was only a mate, oh, please, don't add me to it. Don't blame me. My EMT is just some small subcommittee of cabinet. A man who not too long ago said that President Mahama has managed this economy for eight years. First four years as chair of the economic management team and the second four years as president. Then he even 
has the track record of sending 150 questions to a Mr. Atta. Suddenly, he's saying that those positions don't matter. So I pity President Akufuado. Because the, 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 the output is so abysmal, the performance is so shambolic, all his people, people he had confidence in, asked them to go and negotiate with the IMF to lead everything. They've all abandoned him. Poor old president. He hasn't even left yet. I mean, can you imagine? But, he is still but, president. But that is normal in imagine, the way. It, it is normal Imagine in the way, what right? will happen to him. It is normal in the way there, when there, you have there, a there, flag bearer it's not elected. Normal. I have never Some, seen this. You cede certain powers. I have never powers. seen this. I never saw Professor Mills do this to Rollins. Actually, the accusation, which even the, op the then opposition. I, I do remember. That Rollins was going to. said that he consult Rollins control. 24 7, that he's a puppet. Mm. That you control him. They said they, they, they were too close. But it was uh, it, back then. It was also because yeah. of the I mean, temperament. What we are seeing. You cannot now, run away from the fact what, that Rollins what, was very charismatic. What we are seeing and now. Atta Mills had a very what we are you know, calm now demeanor. Is, it's so strange. It's so bizarre. Mm. I mean, the, so in I, simple terms, you don't trust Dr. Baumia. He cannot be trusted. We, are, we, we we've known already, right. even before all of this dishonesty is being exposed, that you can't take him. What I mean, you remember all so, the things. So within said. this meeting of Parliament, you say by next week, right? Yes. Private yes. members' bill to yes. the effect that yes. government, Dr. Baumia should yes. go. Yes. Now ahead. Dr. Baumia agrees and with us, so we want to test your sincerity and your resolve. All right. Why why kill the people now? Let them so I just suffer. want a clear list of the taxes. Yes. E levy. E levy will be on the list. ECG, 15%, yes. VAT, VAT on electricity. Which some have actually Betting tax. 21.9%. Betting, Betting tax. tax. What else? Yes. The emissions. Emissions levy. The eco levy. Yes. The emissions levy. Yes. Okay. It's all going to be there. All four of them are going yes. to be in there. Yes. All right. Let's, yes. let's, let's make tracks. We'll, we'll test their result. Uh, uh, very quickly, though, optional national service and then public scrutiny of contracts. One minute. What can you give me on that? So. The national service part of his submission is not well thought through. Um, we should rather strengthen national service. I even want to, if you look at the national service law, um, the first six months should even have been compulsory military training. Mm -hmm. And I think that we should go uh, to that. Um, if you have a situation as we have now, where the unemployment rate is at an all-time high, according to the population housing census, about 13.6%, almost 4%, 14%, you need to, National Service serves as an employment absorption opportunity. Uh, I'm getting the sense that what Baumia is doing really is that he wants to uh, save national resources. He doesn't want to pay National Service people. But you see, this is a government that has a reputation. But you're of, pushing them into companies. Of, the companies will of, pay them. Of, of wasting money. Even where they, they carry out savings, they will spend it on themselves. You know, if it's not on chartered travels, it will be on, you know, fanciful projects, you know, like the, the, the president's cathedral. So it, it doesn't make sense to me. When you have high unemployment, the national service scheme, it helps to introduce, look, a lot of employers still demand work experience. They want to be sure that you've had some training, some grooming, some nurturing in the corporate environment. So it is not well thought out. Let's keep the national service. It helps to absorb, soak up the pressure. And, um, uh, and there are many people who tell you that the jobs that they find themselves in now is, is national service that gave them the opportunity. So after national service, when employers are impressed, they then retain yeah, them. But, but, but the know, same they, could they be said for them. instead of going through the service, if an institution, I mean, I know those who way back went to the Unilevers and the rest and the other big shots today. It's the same thing. So if, if you can get in there and still learn the ropes while you're there, yeah, it's but, the how, but how do you get in there? If when there is a law being implemented that is compulsory, you must have room for national service. So he's saying he wants to make know. it optional. That's what he's saying. No, no, it's 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 it, it won't work. It's public it's, scrutiny. It's, it's public not, scrutiny of contracts. It's not in the interest of the of the youth. Public scrutiny of contracts. Yes. Is it, uh, is it feasible? Is it doable? It should have been done long ago. Right. It should have been done long ago. And tomorrow I'll be putting out some interesting exposés. Uh, tomorrow, on, yes, tomorrow. On what uh, specific? Uh, on, on why the government hasn't 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 done this? Um, mm. uh, it, it should have been done long ago. There's really so, so this expose. What will it border? It will border on. It will it'll, it'll be about um, uh, what people are getting away with with a lack of scrutiny of contracts uh, and people. Very will, will a future NDC government people, be people, willing to go people down that who road? are close who are close to certain key 
uh, persons in this in this government, and then and, and you see how we are not getting value for money, how this country is being raped. So others may be doing it. Would a future NDC government be willing to go down that same yeah, road? Yeah, it has to be done. Public scrutiny of contracts. It, it has to be done. It, it has to be done. Everything must be If you're so sourcing, we know. If, yes. Whatever it is, exactly. we know. Exactly. Exactly. It has to be done. It has to be done. And you see, it is, it is a shame that the people who said that, and President Akufuado put out a tweet, Dr. Baumia did the same. Um, when they were campaigning and said that, look, we have too much sole sourcing or single sourcing in this country, that era is coming to an end. They come to power and recently I intercepted all the procurements that this Bank of Ghana uh, era under uh, Dr. Addison has done. Will you believe that not one of their procurements have been competitive? Not one. How Sing many procurements are we looking single at? Single source. About how many single procurements source, are we looking at? Single source procurements. Uh, about 20. And all of them. So sourced. All of them so sourced, including the Bank of Ghana uh, project. Building, the, the $250 million. Uh, dollar yes, we started at $81 million. You know, restrictive tendering and, so, and, and, and single sourcing. That's all they are doing. Is, is there not something then then, then, then against that when it comes to a project that balloons by over 60%? Yes, yes. It's a, it's a, it's a violation of the law. <laughs> you, you should have, you know, re-awarded the whole thing, cancelled that whole, you know, tender. That's what the law says. They didn't respect it. So, look, many people are going to face the music when the NDC comes to power. People have questions to answer. You know, uh, look, there's so many people who wait, are Wait, to, wait till you are, get are, there. Are, wait till, are, wait till, till you are in power position. and wait do you till know you that, do, do it. You know because that? You, par you, you, you parliamentarians and presidential candidates, you have the tendency of doing this. But when you get there, it's a different ball game. They say, do kadaya. You are all the same. And, and you make one promise, oh, we'll come and we'll imprison and, and we'll see nothing. So get again, there and do it. And then maybe, again, that is if you get there, yeah, then again, maybe we can, we can take no, no problem, no um, problem, no problem. But you see, when you make the statement that all the politicians are the same, I, I, I really take a strong exception to that. Uh, but but we are, we are, there, we there's ample the proof to that. We are not all the same. There's ample proof. We are not all the same. But let's make tracks. Um, let's just assess <clears> us <throat> based on our track record, on what we are doing. In, in, in the next few minutes, I really have to run. I've, I've already. But, but I just wanted you to, at least this goes back to Parliament, the anti-gay bill was the latest on it, GRA and SML. And, and all this in some two minutes. The National Cathedral. Is, if there are any new developments you can share with us. Okay. So, so the on, GRA... They yeah. asked you for an apology at some point. You never got to that. Yes, so let me uh, begin with the GRA if you, if you want to. So it um, must be really bite-sized, eh? Yes, so the GRA, I responded that they won't get an apology. Everything I put I out... Saw that. Yes. I saw that response. Yes, everything I put out was factual. Um, the fact of the matter is that at the time that they announced that it was going to be a probe, the, uh, the Commissioner General had long absconded. What the GRA. We are still looking forward to the KPMG report. Yes. And then Parliament is supposed to get yes, it. Yes, and right? Parliament, yeah, Parliament will also be uh, probing that. When, when will um, this happen? Um, any moment from now, it's going to start. Um, okay. uh, the All Finance right. Committee will be doing that any moment okay. from now. All right. Anti gay bill. Um, uh, and then I must add <clears throat> on GRA that this uh, GRA chap is in office illegally. And the, the, you mean Reverend Dr. Amisha Dai yes, is in office illegally? Illegally. Because it, the contract was He doesn't extended. have a contract. And the earlier he's booted out, the better. And you stop signing all these illegal contracts. Um, so we're looking forward to the probe in Parliament. Let me add that on the matter to do with the National <coughs> Cathedral, uh, many people probably have forgotten that the President promised us and promised the Almighty that the project will be commissioned on the 6th of March yes. this year. Uh, it's a few weeks away. Yeah. Uh, the project remains abandoned, and it was bound <coughs> to um, face all of these, um, uh, uh, if you like, um, horrible uh, outcome because of the massive diversions that took place. I mean, okay. the 339 million Ghana cities of our taxes, first of all, we were told that taxpayer funds would not be used. Don't forget that. They said that this would be a private initiative led by the churches and the president's personal donations only for a discovery to be made by right. me right. that apparently on our blind side, on the blind side of parliament, Ken of Uriata, in collusion with the president, they were siphoning public funds for this project. Mm. And when we had a vote of central committee and we asked them for the full breakdown of releases, 339 million, 
and that 339 million, David Ajay alone took 130 million. It doesn't happen anywhere in project management. I mean, it's, it, it defies industry standards. It doesn't happen anywhere. 339 million, one man takes 130 million. Okay. Uh, so Carrie Summers is keeping six million dollars in, in the States. When I went after him, I found out that, look, he's no CEO of any Nehemia group. He's in some ramshackled warehouse, you know. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible, you know. And then you have the secretary, the, the, the double identity scandal that came up. Okay. You don't know Reverend Kusi Bwati. Kusi Bwati. All right. Bwati. Right. Or Kabrai right. Dujim Fee. Right. You, you know, it's, it's just a mess. Auntie Gabriel, uh, when can, when, when can we expect something? I'm not surprised it. that we key, have to go. key prominent um, clergymen have left the board. The latest being at Bishop Duncan Williams and Reverend Isudana, but I'm glad that they have... The anti yeah, when, when can we expect anything? To, Let's go. To we, have to go. The we have to go. Um, expect, it's, it's, it's possible that by Friday it can be passed, this week. It's, it's really, because um, a lot of the work has been done. A lot of the work has been done. And um, it's, 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 it's really possible that by Friday it can be passed. And then I, I'm surprised, I must, I must be, be honest with you, that the Vice President hasn't said a word about it. Uh, we don't know his position on this matter. This is a very important matter. And this is somebody okay. who's been caught on tape claiming to be, you know, such, you know, uh, 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 an Islamic cleric and giant, and he's mm. coming for Muslims. And yet we can't take his okay. his, his, uh, his, his, uh, his view about we're, such we're an going important now. piece of I'll just take, I'll just I take it's disappointing. This, this one comment from an academic, uh, a former vice chancellor, he sent in some messages. He says, uh, what happened to the personal and institutional contributions and donations? UTAG and of various campuses, which I belong to, made significant contributions. I told him that you had mentioned that UGBS and others, I mean the MEPE yes. uh, project. And he and, also says, okay, so maybe and, I... And, I, and, 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 and I think we also have to clarify that the list I put out was the, those, those who supported the building project. The building project. Of course, there are many, there are more than 200 institutions, corporate Ghana foundations who came in to support with relief items, food, okay. you know, clothing, blankets, you know, all right, tents. so all of those are in there. That's, that's, that's a different... I'll not mention his name, and, and but he says, he says you, you, are, you are progressive and he likes you. That's what he says. Thank, Thank you very much for joining us Thank for you. breakfast I'm this humbled. morning. And um, this has been the Member of Parliament in the studio with us, Member of Parliament for North uh, Tong, Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa, discussing issues of national scope with us. But do stay with us because the Save Ghana football demonstration is happening uh, today, are, are you going to join the sports people? Yes, I'll be. I'll be at the front precincts of parliament to the precincts of parliament to receive the petition. Uh, I'm in full support. You will be receiving the petition. The petition, yes. And, okay. and, and because they, I wanted to join them earlier, but they said they're going to present a petition to parliament. So I'll join the speaker to receive the petition. Remember that I put out the, I intercepted the documents, right. the 8.5 right. million right. dollars right. budget. I mean, if you see how much is going into football, and yet we don't have even FIFA standard pitches. I mean, there's no sports policy. Ghana football is just in a mess. All right. And thank, we thank cannot you. accept this. So thank you. I fully endorse the Save Ghana demonstration, and we'll be there to receive the petition. All right. So the Save Ghana football demonstration, Samuel Okujatua Blackwa says he will be at the precincts of parliament to actually accept the petition. We have more on that, including AM business, all of that coming your way, still to come on the AM show. Do stay.